What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving into Grime. Uh, this is kind of a odd world, sort of a freak world game, where it's like a side-scrolling Metroidvania Souls-like. Uh, so anyways, if you've played anything like Dead Cells, you'll get the rough idea. This game sort of prides itself on being hyper-difficult and ultimately, like, attempting to end the player in many ways if you don't master its systems. And so the developers reached out and sent the game over, and I thought that it had a really unique idea with regards to the visual design. And then from taking a look at some of the trailers and gameplay videos, it looked like the parry system was pretty rad, too. And so we're going to dive on in, spend about 25 minutes with it here today, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wishlist, otherwise pass on. If you find yourself saying the sentence, Man! This game looks like it's for me, then I'll have a link for you down below. You can find that next to my Twitch stream. You'll find that next to my Discord, where you're very welcome to join us. And that's about it. So let's dive on in, and let's not waste any more time. New save created. I'm ready to get destroyed. My body is ready. That's exactly how I wake up every single morning. I just come to exist through a giant purple grape flavored black hole. It works every single time, man. When it works, like, why mess with a system that isn't failing? You know what I mean? If it works, don't fix it. Uh, it looks like we can crawl, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let us crawl off to the right. Hopefully, we'll become more ambulatory very, very shortly. But for right now, it looks like we're mostly going to be using our massive Popeye forearms in order to move ourselves around. Oh, we grew legs right there, dude. We're getting there. All right. Continue assembling parts from the void. Assemble them. Hey, we're up on our feet now. And we were born into the world with rocking pecs, dude. We've talked about this in previous videos. It's all about the rocking pecs. All right, looks like we can climb up right there. And it looks like it. Do we like, oh, we automatically. Okay, cool. Look like there might be something right here, though. Aha. Who is this guy? Is he going to try to hurt? Is he just worshipping the wall over here? Great and powerful stone edifice, please help me, for I have been spawned with zero cabeza. Uh, let's see here. All right. Oh, we can, like, dash across stuff, too. Gotcha. All right. So, if we press Q the second an enemy attacks, we can absorb them. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, absorption. The power of the wall is now mine. Apparently, I've got one piece of a frail arm as well. All right. So I can look upwards, and I can 
Okay, some kind of weird potato beast up there. What's down this way? Just some pot. That's cool, that's cool. You can grow that in the cave. Ow, hey. Not now, bro. It looks like we're filling up some kind of meter in the top left every single time we absorb something. Are you guys going to attack me? Oh, dude. All right, I've been slightly wounded. That guy is like, is he dead? Or is he like alive? I can't tell. Let's teabag him real fast, dude. Nobody's going to stay here. And just get teabagged if they're alive. Like, they're definitely going to try to fight. Okay, he's dead. He's definitely dead. Nobody would put up with that kind of disrespect. It's just so disrespectful. Uh, I'm going to go across over to here. Is there anything down there? Or is it just kind of like a... Nah. I I've, I've grown wise to your tricks, weird protruding arm. All right, so. Absorbing an enemy will steal their breath. Press E to convert a breath meter into your health. Okay, all right. That did seem to help out. In fact, it helped out a lot. In fact, it might be a really, really good idea to kind of carry around a full meter with you. That basically topped us up. Oh, we can climb the background, too. That's pretty sweet. All right. Well, I have climbed the background. Let it be known that I am the champion of background climbing. And all that look upon me will despair in knowing my skill. Mmm... Are they going to be okay with the fact that I just, like, drywall punched it? Like, I just League of Legends raged out on, like, their guardian crystal that apparently they worship. Let's see. We can get more health points right there. It looks like we can level up RPG style in a certain respect. Increases maximum force, letting you perform more actions before you run out. We get damage. We get dexterity. And we get... So those basically scale the damage on different types of weapons, whether they be, like, melee, range, fast, slow... Resonance increases damage for your resonance scaling. Okay, all right. Well, for right now, I don't know what any of that does. So I'm going to take the very, very safe choice of adding health. Is that going to modify my character at all? Like the way that I appear, like adding more health make me like... This is one of those things that I feel like RPGs have really left behind. Like, I thought that when Fable came out, this was absolutely going to be sort of like the future. Like, all RPGs after Fable were going to do this. But, like, in Fable, when you put points in strength, you got buffer. Like, when you put points in intelligence, you got, like, smarter and you looked more wizened and you developed kind of like a mana glow, basically. And you started to get kind of glowing tattoos all over you from your search for knowledge. And, like, I... I I've always wondered why that hasn't become more standardized in RPGs. Like, I think it's cool to see the progression of your character as you level up certain stats and attributes and, like, appear different depending on playthrough. Uh, an imprinted level limb becomes your checkpoint and surrogate. If you are shattered, you will reform at the last surrogate. As you reform, so will most prey. Use their mass to develop your vessel. A shard of the womb you once inhabited, it can be used as such again. Oh, that does kind of look like the thing that I spawned out of. You're not entirely wrong about that. Am I going to get a weapon at some point? I'd like to I'd like to bash some heads in. I don't know if I should go up or down. I'll take the high road and you take the low. Oh, God, it's a monster. Okay. It does look like the parry system is, like, somewhat generous. You don't have to be dead on the money in order to get it. Ooh, there's a thing over here. There's secrets. What does that do? Level lamb dust. Does it like give me souls? Is that ow? Hey, 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 hey! Not now, bro. Not now. I don't know what that level lamb dust did for me, but I'm gonna heal up real quick. And then down this way did not appear to be attached to that other way. Oh, you can crouch walk through there. Are you going to go hostile? Okay, he's not going to go hostile. But it does look like we can actually, like, dash while crouching to get through areas. So I assume that right there was supposed to teach us about that mechanic. Just holding down. Now, the control scheme, as it's playing right now, uh, it's WASP just to move around. Left click and right click are going to be your weapon abilities. Uh, e makes you get your, your health back by absorbing your fragment energy. And then Q is for your parry. And I think it works out okay. Get away, uglies! <gasps> Beautiful perfection. Uh, forgive me. For a moment, I thought you were one of my misshapen and disgusting brethren. But no, you're not like them at all. Your proportions are sublime. Ooh, flawless one. 
Please let me serve if I can be of use to you, I promise. I will I, I will look for anything that can be of use to you. Yes, I will find you again with a gift worthy of your divine attention. Hi, hi. How come I don't meet more people in real life that scurry off under the impression that I'm a god and offer to give me temporally extended gifts? I just, I feel like I deserve that, you know what I mean? Like, I've been through, I've been through a lot of stress, and I've been through a lot of struggle in my life, and I just, I sort of feel like, you know, getting gifts from people that revere me as a human god uh, is not too much to ask. It doesn't feel as though that would be, I don't know, particularly arrogant. Uh, I, th I think it's all in a day's work, you know? Okay, so you, he does like a little stumble and then an attack. But he's still a crawler like the last one. I don't know if we're filling out lore right now, if we're getting like some kind of bonuses for defeating these enemies. I'm wondering if we assemble weapons from the bits and bobs and parts that we're like collecting from all these dudes. However, we are starting to get like a reasonable amount of resources for upgrades. The prey hunt is complete. What did that do? Oh, it teleported me back to the womb. Gotcha. Alright, so like, what does this do? It gives me a hundred souls. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and use both of those then, and then we'll pop on in here. It's gonna reset everything anyways, so like, who cares? I I'm pretty sure it like, probably reset when we teleported back anyways, so like, meh. Uh, let's see, it restores 25% of your force on a successful absorb or repel. Looks like I need some kind of resource, though, in order to get that mutation. Okay. I'm gonna go for, like, a little bit of that. I can't afford the strength. How much is that costing me, though? I guess I'll take some more health. I would like it to be noted somewhere how much it's gonna cost you for the next upgrade. It seems like it just performs, like, a subtraction in the moment when you click on it. Like, and I don't see, maybe, uh, maybe it's staring me in the face, and I'm just really, really bad at this. But it looks like there's nowhere where it tells you what the next upgrade actually costs. So I would probably add that to maybe the text box over on the right, just to make that a little bit simpler. I'm going to work my way back over to where we were. Alright, we're back where we were. Let's head upwards. That guy tried to headbutt me with his ridiculous tater head right there. He got punished for it. Like, I was ready. I was like, nothing with a nothing with a massive tater head and a glowing eye like that can ever be benevolent. That thing's going to try to hurt me. Are you going to try to hurt me? <gasps> Flawless one, I have found a gift that is worthy of you. The glorious Carvin used these stick things to more easily crush their disgusting lessers into useful materials. Hi, hi. All right, so we can open up our inventory. Does look like we have a number of things to fiddle around with here. We have the Maul Axe. Okay, so does it scale with, like, strength? What does it scale with? Can shift its fingers into the shape of an axe, dealing increased damage, staggering prey. Okay. So it's a fast weapon. Well, I mean, I've got a club now. It looks like it doesn't scale with anything. Like, it looks like it scales with strength and dexterity, but not with, like, whatever our magic power thing is. We've got other menus over here, too. So we've got... Oh, nice, dude. So as we're killing stuff, we're unlocking their mutations so that we can absorb them into ourselves. We also have a map here, but it's not really filling out for right now. So I assume at some point I'm going to need something... I'm just gonna keep swiping. Yeah, you just kind of die for me, would you? Now that I've got a weapon, it makes this a lot simpler. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I had a feeling it was gonna be something nasty like that, some kind of weaponized high five. Normally, that's how we greet each other and be like, yo, what's up, man, high five. I was born in the 80s too. But like, uh, nope, in this case, massive palm slap to the fit. What is that thing? The beacon has been attuned. Oh, that's how we fill in the map. So it looks like there's a little area over there that I completely and totally forgot about. Alright. 
I wonder if there's more destructible walls and stuff too, dude. I'm a big secret hound. Like, my Skinner box, you know, they've divided players up when it comes to game design into like three or four groups. And there's like conquerors, there's like explorers, there's like crafters, and there's socializers. And it basically sort of implies like what kind of dopamine rush that players get from playing different aspects of a game. And I'm very much an explorer. I like finding secret things and hidden stuff. Attacking and dashing will reduce your force. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, you can break your animation. Okay, so you can break your animation to parry. Yeah, okay, I like that. I like that. What is that thing? I was going to say, that's a thing right there. It's going to do something bad to me. I can tell already. Can I break the stalactites and stalagmites? If you have trouble keeping stalagmites and stalactites um, clear, it's pretty simple. Stalactites, they hang on to the ceiling. You got to hang on tight. Stalagmites, you might stub your toe on them because they're on the floor. So there you go. That's that's how I always remembered it. Ow. That was moderately painful. Oh, it looks like I do get some kind of bonus for hitting him in the back. I'm going to wait till my force comes back. I wonder if I can parry this guy good now that I've seen his animation a couple times. Okay, it doesn't look like the parry is the... Uh, oh, no. Okay, all right, all right. I'm going to smack you, but I'm not going to get greedy. I'm not going to get greedy. I just, I need you to die because I can't die this early in a video. Otherwise, everybody will be like, ha ha, Splattercat's terrible at video. Like, it's, I, I just can't, I can't do that right now. I got to use my meter to get my health back because we're a little, we're, we're a little bit busted. We felt better. All right, we got some more resources in here. A prickly weeper chest. I don't even know what half these items are that I have equipped. Oh, it's a, it's an armor? Oh, nice, dude. So there's actually going to be, like, armor and gear and stuff. Oh, I like that. Okay. I actually sort of enjoy these kind of Jack Kirby visualizations of worlds. Like, I feel like I can't be the only one who's seen enough, like, knights and guys with braided hairs and RPGs and whatnot. Like, I very much like it that I'm some kind of weird taffy pull strawberry bubblegum monster right now who just seems to be strapping new pieces of just found bubblegum all over myself. I'm okay with that. That sounds like fun to me. Is there a way to check and see what these do? So debris field, left click for more info. It's held up by the spirals field, it reduces your damage for 15%. The sharp nail with a fingertip, you can throw this at your foes. Okay. Yeah, put that on my one key, I guess. And I guess I'll put my shield on my two key. All right. What's down here? You should always look down. Before you drop into any pit in any game, I learned that the old school way in, like, Mega Man. And you always look down, dude. You, like, never know what's going to happen down there. But you got to try. Ooh, I mistimed that one horribly. So I really, I only fill up my meter to heal myself by parrying. So, like, parrying is going to be a very, very important... Oh, you can break the head a second time after you kill him the first time in order to get even more souls. Cool. Okay, so the big tater head guys have, like, an extra repository... An extra cash, as it were, inside the old Domerinos. Yeah, I need to absorb some energy off these guys, so I gotta parry four more dudes before I'm strong enough. Oh, we can fire projectiles back, too. Oh, that's sick, dude. I like that, but it looks like projectiles don't actively fill up our meter. A volatile eye. Um, what does the volatile eye do? It's a consumable. Thrown to explode on contact, it will deal moderate damage. Okay. I believe it might be possible that my throwing arm is just too good. I need to absorb your energy. I just like to have a backup heal on hand just in case. But I'm going to break your head a second time because it's full of delicious life juice that I can use to evolve myself and become more rad. All right, so that's where it split off right there. We'll cut up this way. All right, that was faster than I expected, but you know what? I'll take a little bit of damage if it means I can fill up my meter. 
Nothing right there. It looked like there might be a little alcove or like a little depression I could teleport into. Twin fangs. I assume that this is going to be like our first agility weapon. I want to try... Ooh, yeah, I like that. I'm a big dagger user in games like this. Like, obviously, we're going to take a hit when it comes to our reach and our ability to, like, get after the enemy. But can this be broken? No. Okay, so we just have to avoid that. I legitimately have no idea what that guy was planning on doing. Okay, another nail right there. I'm going to try and throw one. Okay. Oh. Oh, I hit the platform. Do I get any cleaving or anything? Oh, there's a thing in the background. I was going to parry it. There we go. There we go. All right, so that gives me enough to get my health meter back. I actually like that they incentivize parrying. And you got to be like, that's a really, really fast reaction time right there. Like, there's definitely a telegraph, and there's definitely a, there's definitely a telegraph and a read to it. But at the same time, like, you've got you to gotta have them reflexes in order to get that done. I'm just going to break you. I'm not sure that I can time you out. Okay, prickly weeper legs. I guess I can throw those on. Okay, well, at least we match now, so that's good. I think I'm going to have to go for an agility build, man. I like using daggers. I like using spears. I like stuff that utilizes dexterity and hand-eye coordination, so I may have to do that. All right, let's jump across over to here and just kind of see what's up. There's some spikes up there. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of, like, run. Th oh, it's you again, huh? I'm not, like, crazy convinced that I can actually parry this guy. I am somewhat curious if I can guide him into the spikes. Oh, he does have a parryable attack right there. Well, then we might as well do it. That way we can actively get like, hey, we got a hunt point right there. Very nice. So I don't know if that's like achievement based. So basically you can't absorb until you parry or like exactly how that mechanic works. But ooh, there's a big spooky eyeball in the back. What do we have going on here? We don't know. Oof. Looks like it drops down. But it's like hard to say. Nope. It looks like they get some kind of reflective damage if you get too close to them. Yeah, it looks like they just walk towards you. They don't actually have an attack animation or anything else like that. I, we are wrong. A mistake. My body, it shouldn't look like this. I can feel it. I know it. My thoughts, my words, they come from a dead thing. A cursed breath. Life forced into the unwilling dirt. Can I put him out of his misery? He doesn't seem too happy with existence, and like, to be fair, I'm not too happy with existence either. Hmm, that's moderately obnoxious. I don't know how I'm gonna get around that. There we go. Just brute force it, man. Just launch for the back end. An unformed hand. Okay. This looks like it busts me out back over here. Definitely looks like I've already been over here, but then again, everything is so kind of twisted and foreign that it's hard to, like... I think that's one thing they've done really, really well with the graphical styling of the game is that it all feels very wrong. And so, in that case, it can feel kind of difficult to keep track of when or where you're trying to go. A blood metal splinter. What does that do? Can be worked into weapons by the breathsmith of the world pillar. Okay, so there's going to be weapon upgradings too. And it looks like we can consume that for some souls. Although, like, I tend to save my little soul containers and stuff until I know I'm struggling. And then I use them all. Because, like, if we use them right now and then we die, right? We lose them and they probably stay on the ground. We probably have to do a corpse run and there's probably some risk of losing them entirely. 
And so anyways, I tend to like save that stuff. God, I love the amount of secrets in this game, dude. Like the secrets are so fun to hunt down and it does look like we get materiel and like goodies from breaking the pots and stuff. Like we are getting resources from breaking that stuff. So I guess I'll go out of my way to do it as much as possible. Yeah, please stop. Like you're nothing but a health meter refill to me. I just, you didn't have to throw your life away like that. It felt really unnecessary, unwise. Okay, so I looped back over here. And I guess I've got to go up into the left. So let's head over that way. Spikes, I'm going to need you to stop and just allow me to pass through. Allow me to pass through. Psst, over here, shimmering one. This wall can't be broken from your side. You can get here through a path above. All right. Okay, destroy challenging prey and you will gain their hunt points. Invest hunt points into your traits inside of surrogates to unlock their power. So yeah, let's evolve, dude. Let's like add something here. Let's make ourselves better at this whole deal. Okay, so gently pulls on nearby vulnerable surface revealing hidden paths. Repelling an attack will damage the attacker. 100% benefit from your resonance. You can now hold left out to walk slowly. Restores 25% of your total force on a successful absorb or repel. That hands down seems to be the best thing. Like getting 25% of your stamina meter back every time you perfect parry. Especially with how important parrying is in this game. Just seems like it's going to be really, really helpful. Is there any overall change to the appearance of my character now that I've taken that trait? Kind of hard to say. I don't know if all these little veins and all these scratches and stuff were on my arms previously. That would be cool, though, if based on the mutations you take, your character actually changed. I do... Another thing right here is if you look at that spot where they put that hand, that's there for an intentional reason. You're not able to progress into the level until you learn how to parry that attack, basically. Like, until you can parry that at least once, they don't let you advance. It's kind of a subtle way that the game is teaching you to play itself. And honestly, that's a really, really good thing for developers to do. Like, people don't like it when you give them a big text box that, like, guides them by the nose. With stuff like that, they tend to not even notice it, and at the same time, you're instilling game skill without explicitly telling them we aren't going to let you pass here before you parry that. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were playing Grime. Tomorrow we will more than likely be playing something else. Thank you for joining me. This is definitely a weird one. We can take a look at the options menu real fast to see if there's anything in here that you wanted to fiddle around with. Uh, standardized stuff with the screen resolution, full screen windowed mode right there. We do have V-Sync, which is really, really nice just in case you end up with tearing. There is an FPS limit that we can also put in just in case you're planning on recording. Uh, some visual softwares really, really, really hate unlocked uh, frame rates. It tends to mess them up when it comes to encoding because they try to encode all 1,200 frames per second or whatever, and it'll get them into trouble. Uh, lots of graphical options you can fiddle around with down here. Honestly, I didn't even notice the motion blur to eliminate it. I do like that they have a gamma setting because the game is a little bit dark, and then obviously you've got your texture qualities, your shadow qualities, and your anti-aliasing style. Audio, they allow you to split things up pretty much in the bog standard way. There's usually not a whole lot of stuff in the audio settings that matter. Inside the game settings, you can turn on and off player damage. It looks like you can turn off enemy damage as well. Controller vibrations. This game is fully compatible with a controller just in case you prefer to play it that way. Because we're playing the PC version of this game, I decided to play with the keyboard controls uh, because they were configured in a way that I find to be basically the holotype example of how PC platforming controls should be designed. Uh, you can change the duration of the notifications and you can get rid of screen shake, which I would probably end up doing anyways because I'm not a big screen shake guy. Uh, other than that, inside the control settings, everything is fully key bindable, as you can see. Uh, so anyways, thank you for stopping on in and I'll see you tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye-bye.